83. Uh, I have respected them since that time. I have loved them since that time. But I never really, really, really got to know them until last night in the restaurant. We stayed so long that I thought they were going to come around and bill us twice. Uh, we had such a wonderful, wonderful time. They both are, they both are very, very special in the Lord Jesus. Uh, he got here because the Holy Spirit led for Daniel uh, and Beverly to go with Daniel to speak at Parker City Christ Fellowship. And almost instantaneously, when Pastor Aaron was telling me about it, the Holy Spirit got in my heart. He's in my heart right now. And I and, and I asked Daniel immediately, would you come? I said, would you come in the, you were there in uh, last month, right? And so I said, would you come in June? And I said, you you pray about it and any any day the Lord puts on your heart. And so this is this is that day. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to hearing what it's going to be today. Amen. And I want to pray. We've been praying. Well, let's pray again one yeah. more time Amen. for our friend Daniel. Monty, would you lead us in prayer? Yes. For Brother Daniel. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And we just pray. Yes. Pray, praise your holy name. And we pray for our, our friend, Brother Daniel. And we pray, God, that you will bless him with words from your heart and from his yes. heart. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm telling you that... Uh, it is a joy to be here. And uh, I surely, you know, we could go back and rewind about 30, we've been married 39 years, right? So if we go back and rewind about 39 years, uh, I went to uh, White Harvest Christ Fellowship. Uh, I mean, one of my first, maybe my first service there. And the pastor said, God tells me that Daniel is to uh, be a children's minister. And so he never asked me. <laughs> he just announced me. <laughs> and so now I'm a children's minister. And uh, But back then I thought I knew something. Uh, I think I know something today. What I know today is I don't know anything. <laughs> That's what I know today. Back then, uh, I wonder why didn't people call me to preach? I was a preacher boy. I was told I had to call to preach. I wonder why uh, I didn't preach very many places. <laughs> that was all right. And uh, I haven't preached in 10 years until just recently. And I've preached three times in the last six months. And uh, I haven't asked to preach really don't want to preach. I used to want to preach. I used to have something to say. I used to think I knew something. That's all gone. Uh, so I say I don't want to preach, but I want to clarify that. I want to preach if God wants me to preach. Right. They don't want to preach. Right. Yeah. But I'm telling you that I know when he called me and I, when I got my call to preach and I, Brother Hill was on the phone and told me, son, don't work out opportunities to preach. And so I never did, but I always thought, why well, don't they call me? I could preach. But Brother Hill told me, don't work out opportunities to preach, but anytime the door opens, you go through it. So when he told me this on the phone, I didn't have any other choice but to say, Yes, because that when I got my call to preach, that's what I was told. If you're called, go. And so I come, and I, I'm on I'm on my first point of my message. I didn't even know. <laughs> I come because I'm called, and uh, So I give God all the praise for the opportunity to be here. I want to tell you, you've treated me like a king. You've treated me like a king. You put me in a beautiful place to spend the night. I, I could stay anywhere and been happy. Uh, but we've got a beautiful room. And uh, 
had a wonderful meal. They were going to take us somewhere, and then he wanted to take us somewhere special, somewhere they loved. We want to take you there. Uh, only God knows when I pulled in this morning and saw that song, what it did within me. To be wanted is a great thing. Yeah. And to be welcomed is a great thing. So I'll tell you, I appreciate everything you've done, but the song was probably the best. Amen. <laughs> I've got a, I want to share. I've been trying to pray for weeks of what God wanted me to preach. And uh, God gave me six messages. I don't know what I'm going to preach again. But God gave me six messages, and I'm trying. And I was, when I went to bed last night, I was going to preach. Years ago, I preached a message about God is looking for the good in everything he created. And I won't go there. But she, I look at the good, and I thought, did I miss it? I don't think I did. But God is good, and he's looking for the good. And everything he created, he said, God saw that it was good. She said, why don't you preach that? So I was going to submit to my wife. Sure. I was, I, I figured that was pretty wise. She's, I'm very far over my head, I'll tell you. I don't deserve her. Uh, she's she pretty awesome woman. Yes, sir. If you hear her play the piano, she's a fabulous pianist, but she's a better wife, and she's a better Christian than me. She is a wife. She's a better wife than she is a pianist. She's a better lover of Jesus than all. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so I was gonna, I was gonna preach this message on God's looking for good. And about eleven thirty last night, I'm trying to sleep. 4.30 I woke up and I got my message. <laughs> so I changed directions. And uh, so here it is. I was asking myself, why why did I come here? Why did I come here? Why? So then I got to the point my where I'm gonna start. God has a purpose. God has a plan. And he had a plan for his son. And why did Jesus come? Do you know it tells you in the word why Jesus came? Several places. And Jesus came not only for one person. Jesus came for everyone and he came for not only one reason. He came for several reasons. And Jesus knew why he came. He knew early in life. Jesus knew early in life why he came. So in Luke chapter 2, if you'll go there with me. And I'll just go ahead and read the chapter. And it came to pass in those days, starting at verse 1, that a decree went out of Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And the census first took place while uh, Quinius was the governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and the lineage of David. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to skip all the way down. We know the story of Jesus' birth. And you know that Jesus, verse 42, or 41. And his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the customs of the feast. And when they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to be in a company, they went a day's journey and saw him among their relatives and acquaintances. So they did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Can you imagine being a parent and losing your child at 12? Where would you be? 
If you're a parent, that would put you in turmoil. You yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. 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 Yes, it would. Uh, <laughs> Now, so it was that after three days, that's a long time, poor Mary and Joseph, we don't think about that. They found him in the temple. Sitting in the midst of the teachers and listening to them and asking the questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. At 12 years of age, I would add. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, what have you done? Why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought for you anxiously. And your father could have written a few more adjectives in there. <laughs> <coughs> and he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know? It must be about my father's business. Jesus knew at 12. He knew at 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what, what yeah. you and I need to learn. Yeah. 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 What Jesus is trying to teach us. Jesus said, did you not know? I need to be about my father's business. Now, notice, Jesus laid aside to obey his parents and went back. Yes, he did. Yeah. 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 He was ready to go at 12. And he, would, he could have done it because he was teaching and talking in the synagogue and they were amazed at, at 12 years of age. If you have a 12 year old, just think. They start telling you things and it took a maze. And Jesus set it all aside because of his mother. Jesus came to do the Father's work. That's why Jesus came. That's one reason. Another place and I'll just Matthew 5, 16. You'll just jump with me a little bit. Sure. It all goes together. The question is, why did Jesus come? And the question is, that I'm going to be asking about me, is why did I come this morning? 5, 16. Let your light so shine before they, men, that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law and the prophets. He's telling you why I came. I came to fulfill them. He had a plan. He had a purpose. Jesus knew his purpose. And he came into this world to fulfill what he was called to do. And you and I are called the same way. We're called to fulfill what God wants to do in our lives. Amen. What Jesus was called to do, we're called to do. Amen. So he came to fulfill. Yes, sir. Amen. Go to John 638 we'll go there hmm. for I have come down from heaven he came where did he come from heaven. he yeah. came from glory right. he came from having the best and being among the best I came down for glory not to do my will yes. but the will of him that sent me it's all leading the same place Jesus came to do God's will, not his own. God had a plan. God had a purpose to send his come to his son, and Jesus came to fulfill that plan and to obey his father. It wasn't Jesus' idea to came to come. For God so God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus had to cooperate with God. Right. Jesus right. had to say yes to the Father. Right. Right. All the way through life, even up to the end when he was in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Yeah. And he prayed that prayer. Right. Hmm. 
not my will. But thine be done. This is why I came, God. I came to do your will. Now, please, help me not to do my will. And let me tell you, if you think then Jesus didn't have a battle, and Jesus couldn't have said, no, you're wrong. And Jesus had to come to the place where he said yes to the Father's will. Yeah. I can give you a few more other scriptures. Jesus, well, Jesus also said in one place, I love this one. Jesus said, I came. He just, he tells you. He tells you why he came. He said, I came that you, Michael Douglas, might have life and have it more abundantly. That's, right. Amen. That's why I came. That's I came that you could experience me. I came that you'd experience real living and know what the purpose is of life. That's why I came, that you might know it. And not only just know it, you might know it and live abundantly. So many of us, so many of us, me included, we live far below of where God wants us to live. God wants you to live the abundant life. Amen. That's right. And the abundant life is knowing Him and doing His will. That's, right. That's the abundant life. Amen. That's why Jesus came. So I was asking myself, I know why Jesus came. Why did I come to Fairhaven Christ Fellowship? I told you right in the beginning. I came because I was called. That's why I'm here. Without an invitation, I wouldn't be here. But I got called and asked to come. And I said yes to the Father's will. Amen. And I'm, I tell you, when you say yes to God's will, there are surprises and joys. It's not always easy. True. You were telling miracles. I want you to know there's a miracle. Two days ago, I couldn't talk. Two days ago, I couldn't talk. Is that right, honey? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I really, my voice Praise was, God. and let me tell you, I don't get sick. Do I get sick? No. You go right on. I go right on. If I get sick, I go right on. And it's the same thing I just did. I went right on. Even I went to work at the golf course. I talked to people when I took their money and they came to register. So I'm glad you're here. <laughs> That'll be $25. You know, uh, my voice was like that. And I called Michael. Now, I wasn't, I will say this, I wasn't a bit worried about coming here. And I wasn't thinking, I didn't call him and say, I can't come. I don't have a voice. I said, if I, I came because God called me to come through the pastor. And I said, if I come and stand up in front of the congregation and can't say a word, I am coming. Praise God. Amen. And if nothing more, if I just stand here and smile, if God called me, he's going to anoint me. That's right. If God called me, he's going to give me something to say. And if I don't say anything, God's going to use that. Because there were times when Jesus didn't say anything. He knew when to keep his mouth shut. So I, I said, Michael, I need prayer. And I am amazed myself. She is amazed of what took place. The pro at the golf course said, why are you going to do this? And yesterday he said, wow, God answered prayer. Crazy. So, I was the only way I was coming. So I came because God called me to come. And I guess... The question I was asking myself when I started this is why do I preach? And I've changed it to why do I come? And I tell you, I came this morning that there would be change. I came for change. I preach for change. I just I'm not getting up here just saying words to put in 30 minutes of time or 15 minutes or 45 minutes. I, <laughs> I came because God wants to change you. God wants to change me. God's got a purpose. Amen. 
Why would he send me here if he didn't have a purpose? God wants to have change in our lives. God wants to help us to be more victorious. God wants to help us to press through the difficult times and the hard times. So I, I came and I'm praying and I've been praying. I've been praying for people I've never saw their face till this morning. I've been praying for it. Praise God. I've been praying that God would change. Praise God. Praise God. I came not for myself. I didn't come for Pastor Michael. I didn't come for today. I came for eternity. Because what God begins never ends. That's eternal. What God starts never ends. And I want eternal results. Not about me. I used to think I could preach. I'm glad I heard that I couldn't. But I'm not preaching for me. I'm preaching for eternal results. I'm preaching because I want to see you in heaven. I was preaching because there's other people, not only you. God wants to touch lives through you. God wants to help you to change people. Yes, sir. This morning I got out of bed and I, 4.30 in the morning, I got up and started preparing. That's when he woke me up. He gave me a new idea, new thought. So I had to spend a little time. I didn't spend a lot because I'm trusting Jesus. You see my notes, they just about three words here, and three words here. I went downstairs and got a cup of coffee and a cup of orange juice. I wanted orange juice for my throat. Lady came in and says, Can I help you? And I said, Is there anything? She said, Oh, yes. So she helped me. I said, uh, She asked something about why I'm here. <laughs> I told her I came to preach at this church. Fairhaven Christ Fellowship. I said, if you're a praying lady, I'll appreciate your prayers. If God will anoint me and God will help me. Yes, sir. And I said, is there any way I can pray for you? Let me tell you, people don't get offended if you ask them if you can pray for them. Really don't, you can step in boldness into that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When I go to... Well, I didn't do it last... But, Many times when I go to the restaurant, I'll say to the waitress, is there any way I can pray for you? Or I might say, we're going to pray. Would you like to join us? I've never had anybody refuse. I've had a lot of people thank me when I got done. Now, I'm probably more comfortable with that than most people. But I want to tell you, to obey God, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. Amen. If you think you're going to be comfortable serving Jesus, i got news for you. He'll put you in situations that aren't comfortable. Yeah. Read the book. Oh, yeah. They're filled with people that got in uncomfortable places. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Every time Jesus came through, every time God came through, yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 it's in the comfortable walk. He'll put you in places where you've got to obey and it's, it's not too easy. You've got to be bold. So I said to this lady, is there any way I can pray for you? Do you remember what she said? I told you. She told me she said something along the line that, that I would know that, God or God's will. That God would reveal himself. That's what she said. She said, you can pray that God will reveal himself to me. Oh what a response. Wow. I'll tell you. Yeah. That's wow. And that I'll know what, what God wants me to do. Her name is Cindy. So Jesus, I lift her right before the throne right now. I pray as she goes throughout her day, she'll remember our conversation as I remember the conversation. And I pray that you will fulfill the dream, fulfill the desire within her. Reveal yourself to her in some great way, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You'll answer that. Amen. Got two more things and then I'll about me, about why I came. I came to encourage, challenge, and inspire the body of Christ. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be strengthened. I want you to know that God's got a plan. I want you to know that God loves you. 
I don't want you to know that God is for you. He's more than everything that can be against you. That's his word. His word is true. Amen. You can quote God's word. It is true. Encourage yourself in the Lord. That's right. That's right. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes there isn't much encouragement around us. But you can encourage yourself. Right. And let me tell you, you can encourage one another. Yeah. Your testimony was so encouraging about your husband. That's the man I met in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm so glad, Travis, when your wife can say something like that. It's pretty awesome. Yes. I wanted to, if you'd ever watch a ball game with me, I said this when I preached in Parker. I'm an avid fan. I'm loud. I, I'm loud. You've probably met very few people like me. I am a unique character. I am, I have a twin brother and he's, He's unique in himself, but I I don't mind being out there. I, you want to say, why? Just back off. But uh, it opened doors, you know, and uh, God's looking. And I stick my foot in my mouth just like Peter did. <laughs> but guess what? Peter's the only one that walked on water. That's right. That's right. None of the other disciples walked That's on right. water. Peter did. Yeah. How would you like to be Peter? Yeah. Yeah, so he got his eyes off Jesus and he went down. But I want to tell you, you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll do some things. You'll be surprised. Amen. 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 Praise God. So, and I... So let me tell you why I'm there. Peter was a great man. My hero in the Bible is Daniel because I stand after Daniel. But I like Peter. Oh, me too. I like Peter. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing I like about Peter. He stayed with it. Yeah. Jesus called him a devil. Yeah. Jesus called him a devil. But he didn't run and get his feelings hurt. He said, oh, this is a devil. He must be dead one. No, he stuck right in there. He took it. He listened. He knew God's love. Yeah. And he knew God knew he could be honest with Peter. Yes. Yeah, amen. And I came, the last reason I, that I know, there's other reasons I'm here. I came to feed the flock. I want you to be fed this morning. When you leave here, I want you to feel like God helped me in some way. I want you to be fed. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Peter, do you love me? I, I forgot it was even in here. And I'm talking about Peter. And Peter said, you know I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? I came. Not that I'm a good cook. Not that I know how to preach. But I came in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If I want to go back to my first point, there is a place in the Bible that Jesus said, I come in the name of the one who sent me. Yes. I want you to know, I come in the name, Praise not my name, I come in the name of the one that sent me. I come in Jesus' name. Yes, when I came this morning, I come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let me turn it and get to the, my third point, and then I'll end. Matthew 5, I mean Matthew, what is it, 28, the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world. Yeah, very good. Yeah. 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 Jesus said, go. So if you go, you're coming somewhere. <laughs> if I if I go, I'm going somewhere. I'm coming somewhere. I'm going, I'm coming to lunch. I'm coming wherever God sent me. I want you to ask the question. Maybe when you get out of bed in the morning. I love this church. I love the youth. I love the children. 
I love it. It's a growing church. I want to shout. Oh, I'm thrilled. Thrilled to see young people on fire for Jesus. Thrilled to see the light of Jesus on people's faces. I'm telling you, I see the light of Jesus on people's faces as I'm preaching. Yes, That's what I look for. I look for when I'm preaching, I'm looking for the light. Yes, sir. Won't you ask yourself? Maybe tomorrow morning when you get out of bed, why am I going to work today? It's to get a paycheck, but that's not why you're going. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. God wants to use you. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said, go ye into all the world and oh, preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see the good works, the work God's doing in you. That's the only good in you. True. The only good in us is what God's doing. Otherwise, it's, it'll burn up. If it's in you, it'll burn up. But God's got to work. Ask yourself, why am I going to school today, young people? Why am I going to college? Look right at you. You're going for a purpose. I prayed in there this morning. We prayed when my son was in first grade about Jesus. Do you want him to go to a public school? Do you want him to go to a private school? Do you want him to go to a Christian school? Do you want us to home school? And I was amazed. Jesus said public school. That wasn't my choice. Jesus said public school. There's a young man today. I know now why God said public school. I know one reason. I don't know all the reasons why God said public school. I know one reason. His, boy, his name is Ryan Morgan. He is a vice principal at a school in Beach Grove, Indiana. My son met him in first grade. They were friends all the way through. They played basketball, they played things together. My son had two very, very close friends. The other boy's name is Jeff. You can pray for him. He's still in his life. He's still wonderful. I thought Jeff was the... As a father looking on, you're looking at who your son is. Friends. I thought Jeff was... Jeff was the MVP. Jeff was on National Honor Society. Jeff was in the top ten. Jeff was a pretty phenomenal young man. My son chose Ryan to be the closer friend. My son made the right choice. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Ryan called me a few weeks ago. Here he is, a vice principal at a public school, and he said, Mr. Jones, my pastor preached on pride. And Mr. Jones, I struggle with that. Would you pray for me, Mr. Jones? Amen. My son's little friend is asking me to pray for him. We pray right then and there. The reason God said my son to go to public school, one reason was Ryan Morgan. There's reasons you go to work. There's reasons you go to school. Let me get real specific. There's reasons you go to the grocery store. There's reasons you go everywhere you go. Because Jesus said, let her light shine for you. God wants your light to shine. Let your light shine. Where? Before men. Where do you see men? You see men at work. You see men, men and women, mankind. Why'd you come to church? Because God wants you used to a courage. Wayne may need encouragement. Somebody else may need help. God's got a purpose. And God wants you to fulfill that purpose in this body. Amen. In this body. That's why you're here. So when you come Sunday morning, don't just come to receive. Come to give. Amen. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Amen. It is. Amen. Praise Last God. thing I'll say is 
Jesus said, I came to serve, but not to be served. Don't look to be served. Look to serve. Your pastor said about it earlier. There's places God wants to use you. And if you don't step up, he'll have to find somebody else or, or somebody else is going to have to do two or three jobs. So ask yourself, God, go home this week. Get along with Jesus. Say, God, what do you want to do? I keep saying this is the last bit. It's been about three years ago. I'm going to... I was having my quiet time when God spoke to me. How do you know God spoke to you? Well, sometimes when God speaks to you, God will speak. We want you to walk it. And then, God said, I want you to write, oh, I got word this morning, I'm going to kiss you three times a night before we go to bed. <laughs> you stood for James White, you stood enough for me. I can learn from somebody. Amen. Yeah. Reach out and grab a hold of it. God spoke to me when, they, when you said that about James White. God said, James, yeah. God told me to write a love letter to my wife every day, the rest of my life. You ever heard such a thing? So I began to write a love letter. After three days, I came downstairs and said, Beverly, how do you write a love letter every day? Sometimes you've got to walk in it before you know it's God. This is what my wife said to me. I said, this is stupid. How do you write a love letter every day? She said, Daniel, please don't say it's stupid. It's changing my life. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, it's changing my life. After three days. After three days. I've not been 100%. I'm in the 90s. <laughs> I've written over a thousand letters to my wife. Sometimes in three pages, sometimes in six pages. Sometimes, like today, she got a card with a little note in it. Praise God. I've missed some days. But I'm going to tell you, she isn't the one that benefited from writing love letters. I'm going to tell you how I benefit. It's changed our home. It's changed our marriage. Young people, if you're a married man, listen to what I'm saying. You might want to learn something that God helped me to learn. You may want to start writing your wife a letter. Try it for a week and see what happens. You can tell that I'm loud. Well, guess what? When I got angry with her, I was loud. And I'd tell her. To be honest, it's the way it was. It's not that way anymore. How do you write a love letter to this woman every day and then yell at her? You don't. <laughs> God's changed me. Praise God. Amen. Is it true? It makes us very uncomfortable. So we address things differently. It's changed the way we relate to one another. Praise God. Amen. And it's a good thing. It's not, it's not a change our home. The greatest change. I've written a love letter to her every day. Missing some, but most every day. The one alone when Jesus said, I want you to be with me. And I'll tell you, in the last three years, I may have missed writing a letter to my wife. I have missed my time with Jesus. I've had my time with Jesus every day. By God's grace, I think I can say I'm 100%. Guess who changed? Me. Me. You get along with Jesus every day, he's going to talk to you. You always won't be comfortable. But he's going to change you. And my life has changed. Praise God. Praise God. Ask God, why am I going here? Why am I coming there? I want you to know, he will tell you. Yes, sir. Amen.
And you know, that was a very, very good word. Amen. You say one Amen. 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 That was excellent. Give Jesus all the praise. Amen. Well, we do want to give Jesus all the praise. Amen. It'll make a difference in every day, won't it? Yes. You say, Lord, yes. what is this day about? Yes. Why am I here? Why am I there? Why am I going? Why am I staying? That writing a love letter to your wife every day, oh my goodness. I don't I thought I had a challenge it. So my heart to tell my wife I love her in a new way every day. That's a piece of cake compared to writing. <laughs> but it, whatever the Lord calls you to, yeah. today's a day to think about it. Yeah. Because there's not one answer that fits everybody. Well, you could say to obey the Lord or to glorify the Lord, but you're specific, you know? True. Sure. You teach a specific place. You work a specific place. You, you're with particular difficult people. Why are you there? To put up with them? To be a light and see the Lord change you. Let's pray together, man, the Lord. This was a simple word. It was an understandable word. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we where we are? Yes. Is it what you intended for us? Is it really all about you? Lord, I pray that you'll quicken this word to our heart, that you'll bring it alive in the times and the moments when it needs to be. And we're praying that it'll make a change in each, each one of us. Help us not to do anything just because we always do it. Mm -hmm. Help us to think, Lord, yeah. when you're looking at this, what are you hoping for when right. come out of this time? That you're having me to do this or do that. The scripture says whatever we do in word or deed, do it all in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ, given thanks through Him, Amen. to God the Father. Let it be, and so in Jesus' name. Let the results be in us what you desire. And we'll look back at this day and say, we give the Lord all the praise and we're thankful for Daniel and Beverly Jones that they came from Indianapolis and a long way and gave up a lot of their time and a lot of their effort come and feed the sheep today mm -hmm. with a question. What is today all about? And we thank you, Lord. We pray that your blessing will be upon them. Mm -hmm. We pray that you'll bless them with long life and good health. Yes. We pray that you'll give them more and more valuable time together. Mm -hmm. I pray that you guard their minds, their brains, yes. and they cause them to work correctly. We pray that you work in their bodies and give them good balance and give them strength in their ankles and knees and feet and back. We pray that you'll be in their emotional systems and make them more and more and more and more tender and more and more and more and more like you. We pray that you'll touch the, the ends, these latter years in their lives make them more and more productive. We pray that you'll raise their joy above it higher than it's ever been. And we pray that you'll erase the doubt level. Lord, those things and so many more we pray. In Jesus' name, for your glory. Amen.